Hi everyone. So welcome to the stream today. Very much excited for having you. We are continuing with our discussion on the study guide or how to study and we've covered a number of subjects so far and today we're going to look at principles of taxation as well as advanced taxation. I want to provide you with the study guide, how you study, the structure of the syllabus, understanding the various treatments of whatever it is that you need to do in order to position yourself to pass the examination. Remember that uh, this is a series that we are doing. We started last week so in case you are doing financial reporting, management accounting, public sector, corporate reporting. I have already done these and you can check them on the how to playlist on the channel and you'll be able to watch these videos because these are the things you need in order to understand the structure of the syllabus, the objective of the examiner and the key areas that you need to focus on in order to ultimately position you to pass the examination. So if you are new here, consider to subscribe to the channel and become a VIP member on the channel every single day, 4.30 p.m. I come your way and provide you with some assistance, some content and most importantly, also be able to answer your questions for you. So you comment below in the chat box or the comment box with any questions that you have for me. I'm going to be reading all your comments and then replying to them as well in that case and consider to give us a thumbs up on the video most importantly make sure that you share the video with anybody uh, your colleagues your friends your loved one we want to have as many students as possible be belonging to this community belonging to this platform so that we will be able to reach as many students as possible at the end of the day to be able to provide more services to students. So let's get into the discussion today, principle of taxation and then advanced taxation. So principle of taxation is paper 2.6. That is the final paper in the level two. And uh, we want to look at how it blends up the syllable structure, the understanding of the syllables, what we need to focus on in order to increase our chances of passing the examination. And then for the level three, the big guys, we're going to be looking at the paper 3.3. That is advanced taxation and also look at the scope of the syllables, what we need to look out for, the areas we need to focus on in order to ultimately, ultimately increase our chances of passing the examination. So let's see, principle of taxation. Now this paper, it's more or less like an independent paper on its own in the level two. It really has no relationship with other papers. Even though something about public sector, yeah, revenue, blah, blah, blah. but really, uh, it, it, it's, it's something on its own in that case. It really doesn't have relationship or connections with other papers, but unless we are dealing with advanced taxation in here. But a key question we need to ask ourselves first is, all right, what is the objective of this paper? What is the objective really? Of this paper if we are going into the exam or, or we are studying principle of taxation at the end of the day what is the objective of the paper that's what we want to look out for in here so starting with the objective of the paper is to enable students okay to describe the Ghanaian tax system okay so what is the Ghanaian tax system about that's the first thing you want to make sure you know number two you need to be able to describe the basic principles of taxation of individuals as well as companies. Okay, so it means that I need to understand the Ghana tax system. Okay, I need to understand taxation of individuals as well as companies. Then three, key aspect of realization of assets. Chargeable gains, alright? So if a company buys an asset or an individual acquires an asset and then disposes of the asset, how do we account for it? Capital gains and the, uh, and the issues about them. I need to understand that. Then the fourth thing there is about tax administration. How is tax administered in Ghana by the Ghana Revenue Authority? The issues about tax system, self-assessment, provisional assessment, issues in relation to tax compliance, all of those things has to do with the objective of the examiner. So the key thing you need to understand is, okay, if I'm going into the exam hall, these four things I cannot overemphasize that, and that is there as well you need to understand. Value or tax. So how do we deal with that? We need to understand that. So thematically, one, Ghanaian tax system. There is going to be a question on that. It is the objective of the syllabus, so definitely there is going to be a question on that in the exam hall. Number two, Basic principles of taxation of individuals and companies is critical. How do we tax individuals? Now remember that now, from now on, we're going to be looking at the 2020 Act. That is the Act 1007. Uh, that is the No Income Tax Act. So we're not looking at the 
uh, how do we call it? That at 896, we're going to be looking at, at 1007 going into November 2020. So you've got to be careful about the switch there because especially when you're dealing with taxation of individuals, you're going to be dealing with reliefs. And now the reliefs have changed from the Act 896 to the Act 1007. And you've got to be careful about understanding all of that. The key aspect of asset realization, like I said, it's an area you need to understand, it's an area you need to focus on, it's an area you need to position yourself in order for you to pass the examination. Then certainly value-added tax and then tax administration. So these are the thematic areas. So irrespective of the book you are using, irrespective of the lecturer who is teaching you, irrespective of how you're going to be studying, these things are no-go area. The objective of the syllabus is for you to be able to describe how these things are done. That is why it makes the subject very interesting. Interesting in the context that the exams is going to be partly calculation and partly written. Sometimes if the examiner is very excited about it, he will bring you a less calculation but more written because the principles we want to understand, okay, how do we tax an individual? Okay, an individual receives a gift, how do we tax that? Or somebody is selling goods, how do we deal with that? So you need to be able to understand how to deal with the calculation issues as well as the theory issues. The nuggets I give to students all the time is this, that whatever thing that you know about how it is computed, you must know how you can write it out in English. What do I mean by that? For instance, when you are dealing with uh, principle of taxation of companies, there is this thing about treatment of financial cost and financial gain. Now, the principle is that the financial cost allowable for tax purposes for a year of assessment is the financial gain plus 50% of the adjusted profit for the period. That is the principle. That is the principle. Now, so you must know how the adjusted profit calculation is done. Then you must know how the financial cost allowable for tax purposes is also treated. Then you can now determine the charitable income of the company. That is the calculation aspect. But then the examiner can ask you that same calculation in theory and ask you how do we treat financial cost and financial gain. So that same calculation could be flipped up for you to write English down. So don't just be babacious on, oh, okay, this is the calculation. No, understand it because the objective of the syllabus is for you to describe. And when you are describing something, it could be both calculation and both written. And so that is why you need to position yourself in order to understand that. Another example I could also give is the treatment of uh, interest expenses as well as exchange losses on debts uh, that are borrowed by an organization. And we, look, we need to be using the thing capitalization concept. That is, debt allowable for tax purposes should be three times the equity of the company. So if we look at the debt of the company and we look at three times the equity of the company and the debt is more than the equity, then we must reduce the debt to the amount of the equity. For that reason, the entire interest expenses paid cannot be allowable for tax purposes. So what are we, well, how, how are we going to do that? We need to look at the allowable debt which is three times the equity then we can now look at the allowable interest expenses but remember if the debt is from a foreign country if the debt is from a foreign subsidiary then or a foreign parent then the interest that we are paying there has to be a withholding tax on that amount as well at eight percent so these are principles these are principles so in as much as you're going to be looking at how i can do the computation you need to be able to also speak it, write it out in English because that is how it's going to be. So if the examiner is excited, he will let you write. If the examiner wants you to just have some things up, then he will let you do the computation because um, chances are 7 out of 10, they can do the computation, but then more or less like 2 out of 10 can actually put the computation into written. Because you see, one of the challenges that we've had uh, and uh, one of the things that I've seen as well, reading the examiner's report has come out to see, uh, uh, to conclude that students actually have issues with expression. All right. Yes, somebody can know something. When you ask them to compute it, they can compute it well. But if that same thing that they can compute is flipped up for them to write it down, expression is a problem. So in as much as you're going forward, and this is setting you up for advanced taxation, setting you up for advanced uh, audit and assurance, setting you up for strategic case study, you need to start building on your expression. 
how you can write simple languages, how you can speak simply so that we can understand actually what you are saying and the points that you are driving at the end of the day. But if you're still going to be talking a lot, speaking a lot, spelling mistakes, not writing well, all of these things must be published because must be polished. Sorry, because if you are able to write and you don't write the way it is supposed to be written, then you're going to be in trouble. So as we're going forward, this is what the examiner wants you to know. Tax administration is a theory area, so you're going to read and write. You got it? Um, realization and VAT, both theory and then computation area. Principles of taxation for, of individuals and companies, theory and calculation, Ghanaian tax system, theory area, you need to understand about that. So as you are going into the exam hall, you know that it's going to be theory, it's going to be calculation. It's like my accounting in, as well in level two, theory and calculation. And at the end of the day, like I said, know that whatever computation that you know how to do, you can tell us how that computation can be done when we ask you to describe it. And that is very critical. That is very, very important. If you are getting value so far, give me a thumbs up on the video. Thank you very much. Comment in the chat box any questions you have for me or in the comment box any questions you have for me. And in case you've not subscribed, you make sure you subscribe to the channel and become a VIP member of the channel. So based on the objective of the module, objective of the syllabus, Let's see the breakdown of the syllables and what we seek to cover or what we seek to look out for. So the syllables, among other things, is divided into eight sessions. Am I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Whoa, nine, ten sessions rather. <laughs> ten sessions of the syllables. And, and, and let's see how it is and how it goes by. The first one is the Ghanaian tax system. I've mentioned this already, understanding the Ghanaian tax system, right? History of taxation, what is the Ghana tax system about, the various acts and various rules that governs taxation in Ghana, all of that. Now, that's 5%. That's 5%. But the deal here is this, there are a lot of things that you need to cover there in that 5%. Let me just give you a glimpse of uh, some of the things that you need to actually cover for that 5%. So let's scroll down to that. Um, let's see. Let me give you a glimpse of some of the things you need to cover there. So like I said, classification of taxation, history of taxation in Ghana, uh, some basic variables of tax planning like entity, time period, jurisdiction or location or and character, character activities variable, tax avoidance, tax evasion scheme, uh, stamp duties, uh, introduction to value added tax, governance structure of the Ghana Revenue Authority and uh, some other issues. So it's just 5%, but there are a couple of other issues in there that you need to really, really understand as a student going into the exam hall. Then we come to the second part, that is fiscal policy. Fiscal policy, among other things, is going to be looking at how government uses tax and expenditure as a, as a tool to, con to achieve any objective of government. So governments can either borrow money in raising revenue, it can either raise it from tax or go for uh, debt. Why will government do that? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? If government brings tax, you know, what will happen? Things will go up, people will be complaining. Okay, if government goes to borrow also, that one we need to pay the interest, we need to put money in the sinking fund regularly so that we can repay the loan. But all of that will expose the country to various things, various conditions and all of that. So fiscal policy is also an area that talks about public debt and public debt management. And you gotta be on the lookout for, for it. 5% of the syllables, but there are a couple of things there that you need to scan, read, and quick, and get yourself out from there. Then we come to one lion heart segment of the syllabus, and that is gonna be tax administration. This is the key aspect of the syllabus. This is where we're gonna be breaking down a couple of other issues like, um, tax assessments, dealing with issues like penalties for non-compliance and uh, the offenses and penalties for non-compliance, dealing with tax returns, claims and all of that. So how is tax actually administered in Ghana, the role of the Ghana Revenue Authority, tax administration reforms, all of these things are classified under this aspect and it's a huge aspect and so the examiner is definitely going to be setting some questions around tax administration and you've got to be on the lookout for in the exam or for this. Then we come to the la creme de la creme and that is income tax liabilities. Income tax liabilities. 
and this is for individuals as well as for partnership I think one of the, the last week when we were doing the live stream, somebody said there was a question on partnership, but partnership is not in the syllabus. Then I'm like, uh oh, do you read the syllabus well? So this is the income tax liabilities of individuals as well as partnerships. All right. Now remember, partnership businesses are not taxed, but the partners of the partnership business are subject to taxation, just like the individuals. Right. So if there's a lion heart area you need to look out for. Then somebody is going to certainly set a question on this, and it is complex area. Either the person is a self-made, uh, a self-employed individual, or the person is in the service of another organization. The computation of the chargeable income of a self-employed, and then somebody who is employed by another company, is a different thing. That is contract of service and contract for service. The way we compute the chargeable income for these two uh, individuals. It's going to be different, so you're going to be careful about the principles, the concepts, and all of that in that case. But most importantly, something that's going to be standing out is the uh, reliefs at the end of the day, all right? The personal reliefs, the treatment of uh, uh, bonuses, treatment of overtime, treatment of loans to employees of the organizations, treatment of the issue in relation to vehicle, accommodation, and all of that, you must understand how those things are treated and those things are put into weight. Then if there is pension, not if there is, once the person is employed by a company, that has to be there the first year by the employer, 13%, then the employee, 5.5%, all of that, you must know how the computation is done in that case. Even though the social security and pension is at this level, that is uh, social security and pension, 5%, when you're dealing with the income tax liability of individuals, you have to look at it from the perspective of the company and not the remittances in that case. So that is an area you need to look out for and these are the key issues you need to be on the lookout for. Then the next thing is corporate tax liabilities. All right. So this is where we now come to the companies, right? So corporate tax liabilities, we come to the companies now. So what do we do here? Deductible allows, uh, deductible expenses, non-deductible expenses, the treatment of capital allowance is a very huge area that is here. Now, in case you don't know, I have a lecture video series here on capital allowance that I can help you on the channel. So let's check the taxation playlist and you can get the lecture videos on capital allowance. Now, there are cases where the examiner will ask you strictly questions on capital allowance that you need to compute. There are other cases to be given to you, then you just deal with the corporate tax liability. But there are a couple of things that are allowable deductions, certain things are non-allowable deductions. So as a student, you have to be on the lookout for, for those things as far as you are dealing with corporate tax liabilities. Then some aside capital allowance, treatment of repairs and improvements. 5% of the written down value of the asset is allowable for tax. The balance will be capitalized and capital allowance will be granted on that. You must understand all of those principles. Then the issues about wholly, exclusively, and necessarily. That is a fundamental principle you need to understand. So when it comes to corporate tax liabilities, if the company pays any fine, that is not allowable for tax purposes. And the company, uh, there is any private or personal expenses that is not allowable for tax purposes. For donations, it is subject to approval by the Ghana Revenue Authority or the Commissioner General or if it is authorized by the agency to which we did the donation to, then it is approved. So you need to look at all of these things there. Something like contribution to the COVID-19 fund of Ghana, that's a donation. And it will be an allowable deduction. Are you getting it? So when the, and, and it's something that all the companies who did it, like it will be allowed for the, because it's to a worthy cause. And once it is to a worthy cause and it is recognized by the institution or the government authority, then it will be treated as an all allowable deduction. But there are a couple of donations that may not be allowable for tax deduction. And you should be able to understand all of these principles because we are there, whether you like it or not, there is a question in the exam or waiting for you on corporate tax liabilities, both theory area as well as computation area. So you have to be in that position. Like I said earlier in my intro, you need to be able to understand the computation aspect as well as the cap, uh, written or description aspect in that case. Because sometimes the examiner can ask you, why is capital allowance not granted on goodwill? 
okay or how do we treat finance cause finance gain i've mentioned this already in the intro how do we uh deal with improvement of assets okay the classes of assets what are the method of depreciation or capital allowance you know class one to class three reducing balance method 40 30 20 plus four and five straight line method 10 and then using the economic useful life of the asset all of that you need to be able to understand all the principles all the concepts in there and there are a lot of things going on in there I, I, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of saying it in a summarized way and it's a, in, a, in a very sincere way so like it's it's like it's simple but there are a lot of principles in there and you need to expose yourself to a lot of questions in order to position yourself to ultimately pass the exams in that case so cover tax liabilities very critical now we come to some five percent segment taxation of gains all right taxation of gains so like I said you buy an asset then you sell the asset, it's a capital gain, shares, bonds, okay, government's bonds and all of that, you buy a new share, you, you sell, those gains is subject to tax and you must know how we look at it and then there are some gains that are exempted from tax, the same thing happened to his brother, gifts tax, you must know how to do all of those treatments, there are certain gifts that are exempted from tax, gifts under uh, divorce settlement, uh, gift funeral, gift those kind of thing. Those things are exempted from taxes, and you need to understand all of those things. Transfer of asset from maybe a father to uh, um, um, let's say a son or something like that, like under will. All those things are not subject to tax, even though it's a gift, they are not subject to tax. So you need to find out, but you gotta be careful when you're dealing with uh, income tax liabilities of individuals. Um, gift in employment or gift in business must be added to the income of the individual, the salary of the individual. So, for instance, if you are working in our company and then uh, for your for the work that you've done, someone gives you a gift, it has to be added to your chargeable uh, income. But if it is not associated with the work that you are done, you are doing, sorry, then we come to the gift tax rules to apply the 15% uh, tax in that case. But as far as it's connected with your employment, then you need to uh, add it to your chargeable income. The same thing happens to companies. If companies receive gifts, we add it to their income and uh, calculate the tax using the corporate tax rate, depending on where they are located. This is something you need to understand. In dealing with corporate tax liabilities, you have to be careful the location of the business and the industry that it is in because that will enable you to know the tax rate, it enables you to know the carryover of losses, it enables you to know even how taxes are, sorry, capital allowances are computed and various other adjustments. That is why I was saying that corporate tax liability is like a beast, you know. There are a lot of things in there, but if you take your time, go through the principles very well. I can guarantee you, you're going to be good. That is why you got to attend lectures, right? So make sure you attend lectures. Don't do it on your own. Then we come to social security and pensions. That's 5% suddenly. So after, uh, the, the simple rule there is that employer is paying 13%, employee is paying 5.5%. So it gives us a total of 18.5%, isn't it? 18.5%. 18 now, of this 18.5%, 13.5% is given to SNET. All right, first year, and then um, what will be left? I think five percent will now go to the uh, approved uh, uh, provident fund uh, by the national, uh, is it National Pension Regulation Authority, NPRA, uh, National Pension Regulatory Authority? They will approve the fund that is going to go in there. But remember, aside these. Uh, the company itself may have another fund that is the third tier. Now, the first and second are statutory, the third is optional, and that one also, like I mentioned earlier, the rule is that it shouldn't exceed 16.5% of the basic salary of the employee for allowable deduction or for relief purposes. So that is also something that we need to understand in there, and that is 5%, you need to look at that. Then we come to value added tax, another huge area now, when it comes to value added tax, you need to look at the tax types of taxable supplies, look at the issues in relation to uh, um, withholding tax on VAT, how VAT is computed on various things. We have exempt supply, zero rated supply, taxable supply, all of that, you must know all of them. And the computation of VAT, you know that is going to be 12.5%, but before you do that, 2.5% NHIL, 2.5% on the uh, GET fund. 
and before you know express 1.5 percent in that case so if an organization is an exempt institution and then that means that uh, the supply will become exempt supply so in that case when they buy from a VAT agent they have to issue the VRPO that is a VAT uh, is it VPOR something like that VAT uh, purchase order receipt yeah VAT purchase order receipt so that that receipt will cover the VAT component of what they are buying because they are not supposed to pay VAT so they will issue that receipt in that case so you must make sure you understand the principles in here as well then there is a withholding tax as well on the VAT and that is what you need to understand then you come to the last aspect and that is withholding tax administration very broad area when you are making payments you need to withhold some of the payment at source but you need to be a VAT withholding agent and there are a couple of rules about it some are final some are on account like i said i say all the time if it is final it means you don't add it to anything else but if it is on account that means that you can you need to add it or include it in your income then after you determine the tax you subtract what has been withheld then you will now determine the tax that is payable to the revenue authority but in dealing with that you must understand that there is the standard 3% for retailers and wholesalers and they, when they are using that 3%, it means they don't qualify for deductible input VAT. Okay, so if you are using the 3%, whatever you collect goes straight to the Ghana Revenue Authority. You won't be allowed a relief for the 3% input VAT. But those who will be using the standard 12.5%, they will be allowed the input VAT they pay uh, when, so that at the end of the day, the VAT remittable to the revenue authority will be the difference between what you collect, that is the output VAT, and what you paid, that is the input VAT. If you paid uh, more than what you collect, that means you have to be refunded, but you will not be refunded, you will actually be carried into the next period. However, if you collect more than you paid, then the balance has to be remitted to the revenue authority in that case. So these are some minor nuggets, some minor principles that you need to understand when it comes to dealing with principle of taxation. Now stay with me, I'm going to come back to that in a moment and I'll be talking about how you need to go about it. And let's switch over to advanced taxation. Now, advanced taxation, like the name suggests, advanced taxation, right? So it's a build up actually on principle of taxation. So it builds on the knowledge of paper 2.6 and further provides a couple of understanding, a couple of things that we need to do. Now, in order for you to excel in advanced taxation, it means all other things meaningful, you, you, you're good here. All right, that's why I always say you cannot chew baba for some papers. All right, you cannot chew baba here because whatever is here, we are actually escalating, we are further uh, taking you ahead of everything you are doing, here, especially when you're dealing with individuals' income tax especially when you're dealing with corporate taxation. These two guys especially are escalated and increased when it comes to dealing with the issue under this. Now, like you, 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 you realize there was nothing about petroleum, natural resources, all of that there, because all of that is now exclusively in the level three that we need to look out for. So let's look at the objectives of this paper. So the objective of this paper is to build on the knowledge of paper 2.6 and further um, equip students with the ability to deal with tax compliance. Remember, there was some introduction to tax compliance here in Ghana tax system. But here we're going to be taking it to the next level. How do we ensure tax compliance? Then, identify opportunities for tax planning. Remember, there was some introduction to tax planning here. But here you're going to be taking it to a step further. Industry tax uh, planning, you're going to be dealing with location, jurisdiction, all of those things, transfer pricing. Now you're going to be taking everything that you've actually been introduced to only in the level two to the next level here and you require a deeper understanding, a deeper reading aspect. Here you're going to be doing a lot, a lot of writing, a lot of interpretation of principles and the questions are going to be scenario based questions, scenario based questions and we want to put you now, this is the thing, all the level three papers, we want to put you to that technical level. Yes? You cannot be equivalent to somebody who is on the field, somebody who has been doing this over the years, but certainly you should be able to do a couple of things. So we, we're going to put you in a simulation, meaning that we're going to put you in a real-time scenario, and then we ask you, 
What is supposed to be done based on the tax laws? What is supposed to be done based on the scenario that we've given you? And you should be able to write out the correct thing. Now, here it is tax. So it is like true or false. If it is true and you choose false, where do you go? Like you are doomed. That's all. You are wrong at the end of the day. So you got to be careful about the principles, about the law. What does it say? If the law says it's 15%, if the law says it's 35% and you do 25%, you're wrong. All right? If the law says this is an anti-avoidance, like thin capitalization, if the law talks about transfer pricing, if the law talks about this, how it is treated, and you say the opposite, you're wrong. So you've got to be very careful here when learning both the tax and the advanced taxation. So I identify opportunities for tax planning. So for instance, a scenario can be given to you like this. A scenario can be given to you like this, that hey, um, you've been advised, not that you've been advised, somebody has come to Ghana and is looking for an investment opportunity. And uh, what kind of investment opportunities can they go into? Or what procedures would they go into in order to be in the better books of the government? That's an opportunity for tax planning. So if they have money, they can go into one day street one factory because their income will be exempted from tax. Oh, okay. Or they can go to the free zones or they can be located somewhere else and re uh, uh, have the tax rebate on location. Or they can go to certain industries where they can have tax holidays or tax concession for 10 years or 5 years. Or better still, they can. there is a way they can structure the organization in such a way that they will be exempted from tax. All of those principles, come on, we're hitting it hard here. So you've got to be careful to really, really... How the principles at your fingertips? Yeah, it's not bad. But you see, I tell, I talk about this a lot because you see, many a times students think uh, passing their exams, especially about taxation, it's about baba. Oh, Charlie, read, 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 and go. No, you you need to understand it. All right, you need to understand it. Okay, that is why if you just study as though I'm studying for the exams, you screwed. All right, you're gonna study as though you're studying for life. You're going to study as though you're studying to go and teach somebody. You're going to study as though your life actually depends on it. And literally, your life depends on it. All right? So you've got to make sure that you understand this very, very well in that case. Three, both Ghana and further international dimensions from uh, dimensions will be considered here. So issues about double taxation will be considered here. Some other international issues in tax will be considered in here. Then, uh, from analysis and evaluation of complex scenarios here, you're going to be dealing with simple scenario by here, you're going to be dealing with a bit com complex scenarios. And it could be an analysis that you're making or an evaluation, meaning there could be computation aspect about it, and then it could be a, 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 something about it. So the examiner will give you a whole financial statement and will ask you to calculate the corporate tax liability and explain why something was included and something was not included so there you need to understand okay what industry are they in if they're natural resources oil exploration mining that means that the rate the tax rate is 35 percent in those places the uh, capital allowance is different the stages of petroleum is different uh dealing with the issues about um uh exploration development and the allowance are done on all of these stages you need to be in that position you need to be able to understand all of that if you are going into it then where are they being located what is their agreement you need to understand all of these principles if really you're going to go through and actually excel in that case then demonstrate skills of com communication to a wide range of clients. Communication is one of the key areas in the syllabus. As you can see here, 10% communication. Writing uh, reports, memos, letters, and uh, the pro forma of them, the things that you're gonna be doing, all of that, it's covered here. But everything you're gonna be doing, the advice you're gonna be giving, the evaluation you're gonna give, the analysis you're gonna give, the scenarios that you're gonna be analyzing, all of them must be done with high ethical standards. So there are some level of ethics here that you need to understand. So you've got to be ethical. So you cannot just behave anyhow. You cannot just give an advice anyhow. You've got to make sure that the tax returns that you are filing, you are not lying to the revenue authority and you are not also taking advantage of the client. You must make sure that you are communicating honestly both to the client entity as well as to the 
uh, revenue authority. Yes, there is tax planning there, but you're going to make sure that you are not abusing the tax planning rules. That is why there is the anti-avoidance. Yes, um, two companies can deal with each other. So company A, maybe I'm company A, you are company B. So if I sell to you, it's a related party transaction and the tax authority realizes that that transaction has a component of transfer pricing. Okay, so let's let's take a scenario. So let's say you are company A, I'm company A, you are company B, and let's say we have company C, all right? So three companies we are, uh, I'm connected to you, but that company we are, we are not connected. Then let's say we sell smartphones or tablets or whatever it is. So let's say I sold those tablets to you for say 3,000 cities, and then I sold it to this person for say 2,500 cities. Okay, why was the same thing sold to different people? So the Ghana Revenue Authority or the Commissioner General has every right to investigate and ask about that. But before he acts about that, the tax law requires that he must first investigate. And this is actually a past question though. He must first identify why was the price difference? Probably time that we bought it. Maybe the time that I sold it to you was at the or uh, uh, early stages and so we it was uh, a, a penetration no not, not penetration scheming pricing skills uh pricing tech uh, policy so we charge a high price but later on these people bought it later on that's why the price was reduced or maybe it was modification maybe you are having the 16 gigabytes but they bought uh, maybe you are having 32 gigabytes but they bought 16 gigabytes or maybe other other things so before the Ghana Revenue Authority can come in and say let's fish they out this they will do all this now if they finish with all these investigations and they realize that hmm specifications are the same the transaction almost took place at the same time there was no reason for the transaction price to be different then they can smell a transfer pricing in there so either i'm shifting the tax responsibility from me to you or we are putting you in such a way that you'll be paying less amount of tax in that case so we need to understand that advanced level of taxation in here so but like i said it, it, it's tough I, I, i'm gonna be real with you it's tough but you've got to be in the position to be able to really understand what you're doing well and position yourself to ultimately pass the exams in relation to that. So of all these that you're going to be doing, ethical standards will be your key nuggets. So it is based on that objective, humongous objective there, that we see that the syllabus is divided into only three segments. Only three segments. So we have optimal tax outcomes. That's 60% of the syllabus. And then we have tax for single company and groups, 30%. So tax for single company and group, it's corporate tax liabilities that has been escalated, that has been further increased, that has been, we, we've added on. So it's like an add-on, all right? Like you buy a car and the car is just $300,000, but you can add on interior, $50,000. 50, you can add on a bigger ring. You can add, so it's like an add-on to make it 30% there. The, the communication, I've already spoken about that. So at the optimal tax outcome level, what are the things we're going to be discussing here? Remember, like I said, mining and oil exploration are going to be coming here. Mining and petroleum taxation are going to be here. You're going to be looking at types of investments uh, that result into tax planning. It's very critical in here. Uh, how to mitigate tax in tax incentive for individuals issues about current development in taxation you need to look at that taxation of uh, various sectors like the free zone and other aspects you need to understand about that dealing with tax implication of mergers amalgamation reorganization selling off how do you treat all of that then issues about permanent establishment and taxation of permanent establishment all of that now like i said earlier uh, and i've been saying all this well make sure you have the syllabus to yourself and then go through the things by yourself so it's an area that covers a lot of aspects it has a component of corporate tax but it has a component of oil exploration but it's more theory calculation theory calculation theory calculations in there then uh, taxation of single companies and individuals. So here, if you are lucky, the examiner will just bring a level two corporate tax computation for you to go away with that. And then groups, like I mentioned earlier, all those things the examiner can ask you. And changing ownership, how is it subject to tax? 
You need to understand all of that. Now, if there is more than 50% change in the ownership of the company, then any uh, unrelieved uh, carry forward of losses, unrelieved capital allowance benefits, and all, any other bad debt uh, unrelieved benefits cannot be taken by the new company in that case because there has been change in more than 15%, 50% of the underlying ownership of the asset. So that is also something that you need to note there in that area. So that is it also about advanced taxation. Very bulky, very key area that you need to understand. Now the question we then ask ourselves, all right, how do we structure ourselves? How do we actually go about the whole thing? Now, in order to increase our chances of actually passing the exams, when it comes to principle of taxation, now, before even I go ahead, comment below with any questions that you have for me in the chat box or in the comment box. I want to hear from you. And if you are getting value, slap, uh, smash the like button. Let it be blue. If it's not blue, click on it. Let it be blue. And then subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying and getting more value here because every single day i'll be coming your way with lecture videos on various subjects on various topics to assist you in order to take your life to the next level most importantly to be able to actually pass the exams and definitely become successful so how do we learn principle of taxation simple we need to take out a couple of things first so you need to know Ghana tax system then you can deal with the tax administration so you take these two guys out reading areas you can do them as fast as possible once you take these two guys out you can deal with income tax liabilities then corporate tax liabilities now before you start with corporate tax liabilities you should be able to have finished with capital allowance because you will need capital allowance when you are doing corporate tax liabilities and then from there you can come to uh, the value added tax and then the issue about withholding tax then once you have dealt with all these then you can now go to the 5% area to spend some time on them but thematically major areas we need to look at is definitely tax administration the Ghana tax system together look at tax administration and then corporate tax and then position of individuals and partnership don't forget that and partnership don't forget that and then VAT and withholding tax, you go about it in that case. For level three, advanced taxation, you make sure that before you are coming to the level three, I mean, you are solid in here, all right? You are solid in here because you are going to just uh, build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up to be able to increase the chances of passing the examination. You can see an image of my new taxation book on, your, uh, on the screen and uh, that is going to be coming out uh, by end of August, and you can grab a copy if you want. You can reach us on 050-114-9296. So you can call or WhatsApp 050-114-9296, 050-114-9296, so that you can grab uh, a copy of that book. It's an advanced, it's, it's, a, it's a revised version of my uh, tax book that was published last year. Uh, and that is based on the new act at 2007 and various other uh, issues that we are going to be dealing with here and that can assist you in order to prepare but most importantly I want to tell you and I want to entreat you to make sure you attend lectures don't do this on your own I don't care who told you hey, and I oh me there I went on my own and I was able to pass the exam and that kind of things don't do it do not do it Make sure you attend a lecture somewhere, whatever it is. Look for somewhere that is closer to you and attend lectures there. If you are located somewhere that you can't get any lecture closer to you, you can consider to study with us online. Our lectures, our on-campus lectures are streamed via Zoom. And so you can be in the comfort of your home or your office and still join the lectures. And you still have our online portal as well that you can watch the videos over and over again and get access to all the complete course and study under my mentorship. If that is for you also, you can opt for that as well. But make sure you attend lectures because don't do this on your own. When you attend lectures, it brings order because the lecturer is going to bring some order on how you need to study this, the areas you need to focus on, the questions that you need to solve, and all of that. And I believe that if you put these in place, you can prepare for these papers and ultimately pass them as a student for the exams that you are going into. So this is what you need to understand about how to study and the study guide of principle of taxation and advanced 
taxation. I'll see you same time tomorrow as we continue with our discussion. Any questions, you comment in the chat box. I'm going to be replying to all of your comments or in the comment box, I'm going to be replying to all of them. Remember that what we're doing here is to provide you with assistance that you need, but the work is going to be on you. What I just did is to give you an overview of what the syllabus is about. Now you're going to take this and build upon it and make sure that you study, prepare well for the exams. Most importantly, understand the principles, then you practice, you get the uh, syllabus structure, which is the examination analysis documents, then you can now go in there and practice a lot of questions. And I believe that if you follow the success triangle, then you'll be able to uh, prepare for the exams and ultimately pass the exam. So thank you very much for joining the stream. It's always a privilege coming your way. From the team here, we say take care, we love you so much and continue to be part of the Insura Premium family and see you same time tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Bye-bye.